Okay, so I think you are confused with um, classifying angles. Yeah. Okay, you are able to get the first one. Well, this is on the numbers um, 21 because it's smaller than 90 degrees. Mm. Right, so that's an acute angle, that's correct. 91. An angle that is already beyond 90 but is less than 180 is an obvious angle mm. because reflex is the angle that goes beyond 180. Yes. For example, 265, you're, you're correct, it's a reflex angle because it is more than 180. Yeah. Okay, more than 180 but less than 360, so it's a reflex. Okay, so don't um, be confused. 91, bigger than 90. Mm. And then less than 180. Okay, you understand? Okay. So next is this is the idea on alternate interior angles, corresponding and interior angles that are supplementary. Well, you're correct to say that the alternate interior angles, one example of them, because there are also other alternate interior angles. So 3 and 6, so 3 and 6, so that's correct. Alternate, and then there are interior angles. Okay, but it seems to me that you're not sure on how to find or identify corresponding angles. Corresponding angles have the same measure, and they lie on the same side. Well, well if you look at the, the diagram, you have the parallel lines, and the third line, which we call the transversal line, it, this line basically divides the plane into two regions, mm. the one on the left and then the one on the right. Mm. Okay, so corresponding angles are on the same side, mm. okay, meaning in same area. So this is the first area, the left side, and the second area is the right side. Mm. So corresponding, and as I already noted here, 1, the corresponding angle of 1 is 5. Okay, they have the same measure. And if you look at, at the diagram, you could see that they, or the, how they are drawn are the same. Okay, so 1 is an obvious angle, 5 is also an obvious angle. Okay, another example is 3 and 7. Okay, on the other side, you can have 2 and 6, and then 4 and 8. Okay, some people remember this as like, you're trying to skip an angle to get the corresponding angle. Although that's like how you memorize it, but the main idea is they're on the same side, and they have the same measure. Okay, so that's why they are called corresponding angles, because they are basically the same in terms of measure. Interior angles which are supplementary. So yesterday we discussed about interior angles. So if you look at the diagram, these two lines creates an interior region. Okay? So it's a one in between. So the interior angles are 3, 4, 5, and 6. Some of the interior angles are alternate interior but there are also interior angles that are supplementary. Yes. Supplementary because they add up to 180. Okay, so based on the diagram, this is how you see the interior angles that are supplementary. They are on the same side. So basically, that's 4 and 6. Yes. Okay, you never consider 2 it's and 8. 4 and, 6. 4 and 6 or 3 and 5. Okay, but you were asked to just identify 1. Yes. So. Process. For you? For me. Okay, but you try to just have to remember they are on the same side. But first you have to limit your your angles. They are interior angles. And then the interior angles that are supplementary are the ones on the same side. Yes. If you try to like go from one area to another, then you are getting the alternate interior angles. Yes. Okay. Okay, so here's the next one. Number seven is the application of alternate interior, corresponding angles, or alternate, uh, or 
interior angles that are supplementary. Okay, so well, this is not a very, or this is a problem which will require you several steps to get the final answer. But try to mix or try to make some um, equations based on the relationship of the angles. Okay, note that I indicated here that this angle is also 75 minus x. Because whenever you have angles in this form, they have the same measure. So I can also label this angle to be 75 minus x, the same as this angle. Okay, and then these two angles are related because they are interior angles that are supplementary. Okay, they are supplementary. So if you add the two, then you get 180 in total. Okay, so once you know that this is the relationship, the rest will just be algebra, using algebra. So add what you can add. So make sure you apply addition of expressions properly. That's 5x minus x. That's 4x. Negative 15 and 75. That will give you 60. Okay, so try to reduce the equation until you get to the exact value of x. In the end, it will be 30. Okay? So, oh, I, I did not explain the step-by-step -step, um, process in the equations, but try to follow. Do you understand how these numbers are being like transferred to the other side? Yes. By subtracting both sides by 60, and then by dividing by 4. Anyway, the, the notes are here, so you can always review. Okay? No question? No question. Are you sure? Uh, no. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. Okay, but still practice on how to answer this, okay? Yes. So here's the next one. It's very similar. We just have to apply the relationship of alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are or have the same measure. So when you say they have the same measure, then meaning, that means they are equal. Yes. Okay, as you can see in my solution, I wrote here that 3x plus 34 is equal to 5x minus 14. Yes. Okay, and then same idea, you apply algebra. So the second step is basically the result when you subtract 3x on both sides and you add 14 on both sides. Yes. Okay? But some people remember it like the transposition method, like as if you're transferring the 3x on the other side and 14 on the other side. Yes. You always note that the sign of these terms or expressions will change from positive becomes minus 3x. From minus 14 or negative 14, it becomes plus 14. Yes. Okay, so I'll add 34 and 14, that's 48. 5x minus 3x is 2x. And then I want to get the x, so I have to divide this by 2. So divide by 2 and divide by 2, the x must be equal to 24. Yes. Okay, so that's what we are looking for is the value of x. Okay, so here is the, is the next one. Okay, um, what symbols do you see in the triangle? Because some symbols will, well, they have they have a meaning. Okay, a symbol in a triangle has a meaning. So, if you try to look at the triangle, you see this symbols. It means the sides are the same. And when the sides are the same, the angles facing those sides are also the same. It's a special characteristic of a triangle. So as you can see, one of the angles here is already 48. So that's an enough information for us to say that Y is also 48. Because the two angles must be the same. Okay, but how do we find the X? Now, if... This is already 
if this is already known to be 48 and since we know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is always 180 then 48 plus 48 plus 2x is equal to 180 okay that's an idea 48 plus 48 is 96 plus 2x is equal to 180 you understand you're sure now I am sure 2x is 180 minus 96 well, can you help me find what is 180 minus 96? Let's see. What do you get for 180 minus 96? Do it there. It's around what? Is it 84? 84, right? Okay, so that means 2x is equal to 84. If double the x is 84, see? 2 times x means double, double the x, it will be 84. So what must be x? So it must be what? 84 divided by? Divided by 84 84 divided by? 86 uh, no, uh, Not 86 divided by? Mm, 2 2 Right? From 2x equals 84 That's how we got 42 degrees Okay So again the ideas are the sum of the angles is always 180. For triangles with the same sides, the angles facing them are also the same. Okay, next. Letter B. Okay, there are two ways that we can solve this. And I wrote the first and the second solution. Okay, the first one is coming from the idea that given any triangle, the sum of the angles is always 180. Well, initially, we don't know the measure of this angle. But since we know that the outside, we call it the exterior, remote exterior angle is 123, then that information can help us find the angle here. Okay, from a straight line, if we will remove 123, well, a straight line has a straight angle with, with a measure of 180. So 180 minus 123 will give us 57. Okay, and then sum up the 3, you get 39 plus 57 plus x equals 180. And then you solve that, you get 84. Okay, now next, what, what is the other way? Well, there's an idea in, in this kind of problems that the sum of these two is always equal to this okay the sum of these two is always equal to this so we have uh, x plus 39 the sum of the two the remote interior angles okay the remote interior angles the sum of them is equal to the exterior angle 123 how do you get 84 it's basically x is equal to 123 minus 39 and that is equal to 84 okay understand okay the next one find the value of the unknowns on the rectangle below so as you can see it says it's a rectangle you always remember that for a rectangle the angles at the corners okay they're always 90 degrees yes. because it is a rectangle yes. okay now since it's a 90 degree angle at the corner then we could say that the sum of x and 29 must be equal to 90 mm. if we add the two okay in, in an equation it will look like this x plus 29 is equal to 90 yes. so x must be <coughs> 90 minus 29 that's how I got 61 yes. that's the value of x well why is the easier to find okay. uh, 29 is an alternate angle to y so alternate 
angles are the same. Okay, so if this is 29, then y must also be 29. Okay. Okay, the next one. This is number 11. Number 11 is a kite problem. Okay, so this figure is called a kite. So what are the characteristics of a kite? Okay, first one, this angle is equal to that angle. Okay, if you create a line connecting this vertex A, we call this vertex A, and vertex C, the angles that you will form are congruent, meaning they are the same. And as you can see, that's 56, and I wrote here 56 because they are the same. Now, if this is 33 and y is the same as 33, then y must be equal to 33 degrees. Okay, now how do we find the x? Well, I put 56 there because the idea is given the triangle, I can relate x, 33, and 56. The sum of the three angles must be 180. And here, it is very clear that if I will subtract 56 from 180 and 33 from 180, or meaning these two angles subtracted from 180, you will get the measure of x, right? If you remove 56, remove 33 from 180, then you will get the remaining angle x, which is actually 91. Okay? So, that's for number 11. Questions? No question. question. You understand? Um, just, just, one, just one question. Um, about the 56 and the 30. The 56, because they are the same. Yes. Okay, so we already know immediately that this angle is equal to 56. Yeah. Mm. And we will use that information to find the x. Yes. Because 33 plus 56 plus x is equal to 180. Yeah. Okay, so in, in like a reverse form, in a reverse form, we remove 56 and 33 from 180, or we subtract rather, and then we will get the remaining angle for x. Okay. Okay, next. What is the measure of each exterior angle of a regular pentagon? Okay, I think what you're missing here is that is the idea that the sum of the exterior angles is always 360. So whatever figure I give you, like hexagon, heptagon, nonagon, octagon, whatever polygon, the sum of the angles is always 360. So if I will be asking you, what is the measure of each? And we know that the figure is a pentagon with five sides. If a pentagon has five sides. Then all we have to do is to divide the 360 by the number of sides. Okay, so 360 divided by 5 will give us 72. Yeah. Okay, so if I ask you, what about if the figure is a hexagon? Then a hexagon has 6 sides. Mm. Then we divide 360 by 6. Mm. Okay? If, it, if I say, what if it's a regular heptagon? A heptagon has 7 sides. You divide 360 by Seven. So the main idea is you should know the, the sum of the exterior angles which is 360 and how you will find the measure of each given as a specific polygon. Okay. okay, finally, number 13, what is the sum of the interior angles of a heptagon? Okay, now this is the idea that you need to know. The sum is or can be solved by this formula, n minus 2 times 180. What is n in this formula? The n is the number of sides of the polygon. So in this question, the polygon that is given to you is a heptagon. And a heptagon has 7 sides. So as you can see in my solution, I replace n by 7 because that's the number of sides. 7 minus 2 is 5. 
5 times 180 is 900. This is something that you can answer with a calculator or you can do it manually if you want. Okay? But the idea is the sum is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Okay? So those are the questions that you need to work on. So watching this video is not enough. So try to practice after. Okay. Have, a, uh, have your tutor guide you on understanding my explanation. So I'm not sure if you really understand each and every explanation that I uh, I prepared here, okay? So do it with your tutor. Ask questions when you cannot understand. Okay? If you find something, well, hopefully there are no uh, uh, unclear explanations. You can always ask your tutor to explain it again. Okay? So that's it.